We think of a zoo as a safe refuge for animals. That was an expectation turned upside down, Randall Pinkston tells us, when one particular zoo ended up on the front lines of war, where in many ways it continues to find itself to this day. March 19th, 2003. The United States begins its shock and awe campaign. Missiles rain down on Baghdad. The opening salvo of the Iraq War. 4,000 miles away at the idyllic Tula Tula Game Preserve in South Africa, wildlife conservationist Lawrence Anthony was following the war on TV. I was actually standing outside looking at a herd of elephants and it was 2 o'clock in the morning and I, my attention just kept getting pulled back to the TV I'd been watching and I thought I've got to do something, I'm, go I'm going to do something. He knew people were dying, but he felt he could best use his skills to help the animals. In wartime, history shows they are expendable. The, be the, the best records go back to the Berlin Zoo and the Dresden Zoo in the Second World War. The, the, the reports are that up to 13,000 animals died. He had no game plan, no official backing. I fudged it a little bit. When I was in South Africa, I eventually ended up phoning CENTCOM, Central Command. And I just said to them, hello, crossed my fingers and said, I'm taking over this, you know, I'm the guy who's going to take over the zoo in Baghdad. How do I do that? Who do I speak to? And they put me through to somebody in Kuwait and I phoned them and I said, CENTCOM said I should phone you. <laughs> a little more than a week later, he arrived at the gates of the Baghdad Zoo. Why are you so concerned about animals when there's so many people dying and suffering you can't separate man from the animal kingdom we have um, uh, ethical responsibilities if you're going to cage wildlife we have to take responsibility so by comparison the bronx zoo here is Huge. 600 oh, acres yeah. we met up with anthony earlier this month at new york's bronx zoo which is supporting his efforts he was in the united states promoting his cause and his book do you remember the moment that you saw the zoo for the first time very clearly very clearly. What did you see? A mess. It was absolute mess. Everything had been stripped. They'd stolen everything. And there were 650 animals and birds in the zoo. Um, before I arrived, when I got there, we were at 30. 30? 30 left only. Out of 650? That's correct. So with the invasion, the food aid stopped, so the city was starving. And they were stealing the animals to eat them. All that was left were the animals that were big enough or strong enough or had big enough teeth or long enough claws that the looters couldn't take them. Come boy, come boy. Uh, he was just miserable, filthy, caked in months of dirt, w drinking water that was just, you could, you could smell the water from meters away. He was really in shocking condition. The lions were so thirsty that when he gave, uh, managed to get water into their enclosures, they, they couldn't even drink, they couldn't lap the water up. So what they did was immerse their faces in the water until it loosened their tongues enough that they could actually lap the water up. When Lawrence arrived, only a handful of zoo employees remained, including the senior veterinarian, Dr. Hussan. And I showed him that I had medicines and drugs and supplies, and he just he burst into tears. I mean, he just burst into tears. For the first few weeks, Lawrence paid the workers and bought supplies out of his own pocket until the cavalry arrived. Who's, who's, who's from a farm? Anybody from a farm? All right, so all the way in the back, some good alfalfa hay, real good The hay. U.S. Army didn't have any formal plans for the zoo, so they improvised. Individual American soldiers, absolutely outstanding. I've, I've got to tell you, absolutely outstanding young men. These chaps were fighting a war. They had plenty on their plates. And I mean, they would come back at the end of the day uh, put their rifles down, pick up a shovel, or get involved, or do whatever needed, and say, how can Did I they help, help you muck out the cages? Absolutely. Guys helped us with cages. They helped us with everything. Okay. Uh, thanks for that guy. Get his permission to get over there. Okay. And, the and then there was Captain William Sumner. Like we're doing all this stuff. Captain Sumner was assigned to the Iraqi National Museum, which had also been looted. One day, he asked a superior officer if there was anything else he could do to help. He said, well, I happen to have a little zoo. Can you go take a look at it? I thought it was just at a little zoo, a petting zoo maybe, where he had a few 
small animals. I had no inkling and I had no background skills and I showed up and uh, basically said, hi, I'm in charge of the place and by the way, I'm an archaeologist. You can coordinate, I'll be very happy. Okay, get this thing going. Very quickly, Captain Sumner, Anthony, and their team became the go-to guys for every stray or endangered animal in Baghdad. That is just shocking. Everything from pelicans to porcupines. They rescued dogs from cages in dilapidated zoos. And lions from the palace owned by Saddam Hussein's son, Uday. Their work was both dangerous... Um, I'm kind of worried about this large carnival cruising through the streets of Baghdad. Uh, ...and at times surreal. Can somebody get me the remains Like their adventure with a sick camel. We nicknamed him Lumpy. We were able to get him out of the zoo, get him upright, and basically between about six Iraqis, um, myself and my specialist literally jammed him onto the back of our Humvee. Uh, we cargo strapped him down and he drove with us uh, to the zoo. Had his head poking between us on the way over and uh, seemed to enjoy himself. <laughs> Four months after Lawrence Anthony and Captain Sumner took control, the Baghdad Zoo officially reopened to the public. The first visitors, children from a local orphanage. So the zoo is now in the hands of the Iraqis? Completely in the hands of the Iraqis, yes. Overall victory remains elusive four years into the war in Iraq. Still, there are some untold stories, some hints of hope. Saving the Baghdad Zoo, it seems, is one of them. The, the only game on this planet is survival. We're all engaged in this game. You, you can't just take humans and separate them out. Everything lives together. Life survives. 